Atticus? Is that you? Let me guess. You've gotten yourself into some kind of jam, swinging by your toes over a tiger cage? Locked in a trunk? That doesn't sound like part of your dream. How'd you manage that? I sincerely doubt that. The fact that I'm hearing your voice now suggests otherwise. Don't mess with him, kid. He's the final gatekeeper. Way too strong. You need to learn the spell first, before you can go up against him. Hey, if I knew it, I'd tell you. Speaking of which, did you find the box, Copernicus? Have you opened it yet? Figure out a way to open that box, Copernicus. Inside, you'll find out who you really are. Lucky for you, I've got my farmer's almanac here. Let's have a look. Hang on. See, see, cabbage, caraway, carrot, car trunk. First thing you should do is reach around for the latch. Sounds kind of obvious. Okay, next step. See if you can scare up the brake lights. Can you find them? It's a little gizmo with some wires. Okay. Yank on the wires and try to pull the lights into the trunk with you. Got them? What color are the lights? We need a green light, kid. A steady green light. That's the way forward. Gotta run now. Good luck to you, kid. ما أدري شو تسوي بسيارتي بس من خبرتي بهذا المكان راح تسح بعدين إنجليش آسف ما أدري هاي مو صدق بس أنا أشعر به كان من صدق حجة سعر كل شيء إحنا إلها دلالة رمزية الستيرن الجير ولا القرن على الدشبول إيه معود على كيفك أريد أوقف Yeah. 
English? No, sorry. I could of course back in the real world, but it doesn't seem to have come with me into this place. To me, this sounds like Arabic. I guess it depends on one's perspective. Anyway, as long as you're not going to start shouting at me again, it's an improvement. How would I know? It's not even my car. No idea. I find myself behind the wheel here night after night. And the trunk, that's my dream too. You don't want to know how many hours I've spent in there, trying to shift my legs to keep them from falling asleep. What do you mean? Whose guard? Yours? Now I know you must be an English speaker. The only people in the world convinced that every story revolves around them. Who are you, anyway? I'm... I'm not sure, actually. But here, it's funny. On this highway, everybody calls me Al-Shatir. Copernicus, eh? Suddenly, this doesn't seem so arbitrary. Never heard of Ibn al-Shatir? A famous astronomer. I guess you don't learn about him in your schools. One of the forefathers of astronomy, in many ways a predecessor to... Yes, that's right. Copernicus, al-Shatir. Two iconoclasts from different lands who challenged the belief that the sun revolved around the earth. Two dreamers who had the conviction that their unique consciousness is not the only thing in the center of the universe. Maybe you're not just part of my story, like I'm not part of yours. You were trapped in the trunk, where I've been many times. It's like you've wandered into my dream, and I've wandered into yours. How should I know? Somehow the streams have crossed. Disturbance in space-time continue? as soon as the dust settles. On the news, you hear only about armies and religious madmen. But it's the gangsters that drove me away. They're the ones who did this to me. The Al-Mahdi army. 
They called themselves an army anyway. They were looking for my brother-in-law because he worked as a translator for the US military. Neighbors warned us we should move. And so we did, twice. Luckily, no, he was safe with the army beyond their reach. A few years passed and we forgot about the threat. Life had returned to normal. And that's when they came back and picked me up. Two days later, when I woke up in a Baghdad hospital, I found out that they dumped me off there and told the hospital that I'd hurt myself in a work accident. Yes, after that, I couldn't stay. What is your dream about? A breakup? That's it? Ah, that's more like it. Who has been kidnapped? Who is this person that's been taken away from you? Do you have a photo? Who knows? Maybe I've seen her somewhere along this highway. I know her, the same woman, but with different hair color. I just saw her at the gas station a few miles back. A decoy? What kind of game are you playing here? I'd say you're lucky nobody got hurt. You sure? Didn't she also warn you that you're the one pulling the strings here? How do I put this? In this place, it's important to see things for what they really are. Keep them pinned down. The moment you start shifting things around to suit your needs, well, you're like Pandora, opening the box. There was a scene there at the gas station. She was being questioned by two men. She seemed to be explaining herself, pointing at the empty passenger seat in her car. They didn't really seem interested in her, though. They were more interested in the empty car seat. Not exactly. There was a lot of pointing at the passenger seat in her car and shrugging. It seemed they'd lost something. Or someone. The leader, he seemed very unhappy. A guy in an orange vest. A trap? So they were looking for you? Sounds like getting in my dream, getting in the trunk, may have saved your neck. No. I didn't get a look. I just heard one strange thing they said. That they were looking for a guy with eight fingers. They were going to find him. Something like that. Eight fingers. Eight, eight digits, maybe. Uh-huh. And you wouldn't happen to have a strange blue box with you, would you? That was the other thing they mentioned. They have the key, but don't want the box opened. No, I didn't get a look. Say, have you noticed how many tumbleweeds there are suddenly? I don't know, but the weather also seems to be turning suddenly. Turn on the radio and see if you can find a weather report. My God, get that thing off the window! Get it off! Get it off! It seems to be changing the weather conditions. for better weather. Sunny skies today, and we could hardly ask for better weather. A balmy 72 degrees, with mild breeze. Suddenly, it's sunny. It's not working. They're stuck to the car. We need some other kind of weather to get clear of them. Warning, looks tornado like tornado 60 from car. Tornado. 
Look, the tornado. It's starting to pull the tumbleweeds off the car, but it's not strong enough. Warning, tornado, tornado 20 feet from car. Tornado 40 feet from car. Tornado 20 feet from car. Tornado warning. Warning, tornado 40 feet from car. Tornado 20, tornado 40 feet, tornado 20 feet from car. Tornado 40 feet, tornado 20. It worked. Oh. Look, that was very strange, even for this place. And the eyes on those things, it seemed they were spying, searching for something. Did you notice? What do you know about these guys, the ones who are after you? Seems he had a few extra to spare for the tumbleweeds. I see, what else? Oh, let's see. Back on tours? Not directly, no. But I've heard about them. From a guy in Istanbul I met. He had made it through to Europe, but then had come back to get his family. But that's another story. He had come across this Balkan tours on his way back from Serbia. He warned everyone about them who would listen. Apparently, they had a charitable program to help refugees, promising to help them. But no one who accepted their help was ever seen from again. People just disappeared. And it wasn't just people in the refugee community either. Tourists too. There were strange stories. Did she mention anything about this Balkan tours to you? Yes, I guess merely the fact that you ever saw her again suggests otherwise. Still, it seems like a connection. Well, I hope she hasn't fallen into their hands now. Some of the stories circulating around refugee camps in Serbia at this time. I only heard bits and pieces. Nothing very clear. Mirrors. Rooms full of mirrors. People losing their minds and never coming back. Yes, people who were heading from Turkey into Croatia and Serbia were being warned about it. Watch out for mirrors. Rooms full of mirrors. Rooms full of ice. Well, my friend, I think right now the best thing you can do is run for safety. They probably have a good beat on your location, assuming the tumbleweeds were on their payroll. Make no mistake, these guys are dangerous. Well, we've all been in a dream. We've wanted to wake up from, but couldn't, right? Let's just say there are people who thrive on that fear and have ways of keeping you from waking up. Exactly. What did you do to these guys anyway? Why you? Right. Where did you get the box? They must be worried about what's inside. Worried it will expose them, all the things they've done, to her and to all the other people they've hurt. I wish I knew. Even if I make it to my destination, I'm still not home. That's what it means to be an exile. My niece, Nadia, used to ask me that question all the time. Where are you going, uncle? She was the only young person who knew I was leaving. Imagine, she knew when my father didn't. I was always mad at my sister for telling her. She would ask me that when I was putting her to bed. The only thing you can tell when a person that young asks you a question like that at bedtime. I told her the truth. Not the truth truth, but 
the truth wrapped in the blanket of a story. There's a place where the river Tigris run through Baghdad. A place called the Two-Story Bridge. When I was a kid, I would go fishing there and look out at the water and wonder where it all led. As a child, I was told that the farthest place on the earth from Baghdad is a place called Fiji. I would train my eyes on the horizon and imagine that all the water led there to the point where the sky met the earth. To my child's mind, Fiji was the place where the sky touches the earth. These people of Fiji, they must be very tolerant people to live in such a place where one has to stoop over at all times and can never stand up straight. Eventually, they resolved to leave and find a new home where the sky was farther from the earth, where the panelist tree can grow high enough to be woven. So, they left this land right under the sky, leaving behind those people so old and banned that they no longer cared to stand up straight. The other Fijians gradually moved away from the edge of the world, and the sky got a little higher, and then they found a marvelous place. It was fertile and lush, with excellent weather, an orange tree for every backyard. But there was one problem, earthquakes. Terrible earthquakes, as frequent as rains during the springtime in this country. All because the sky was still close to the earth. When there's thunder, it echoes off the roof of the sky and causes the ground to break. But the Fijians adjusted. They built their entire civilization out of rubber. Rubber houses with rubber beds that would sway during the quakes, with rubber restraints that would hold the sleeping Fijians tight while they dreamed. But Nadia didn't want a bedtime story about that. She wanted a story about good and evil, the kind of story children like. So I changed it for her to be about a Fijian princess called Nadia, who finds the source of all the earthquakes. So, Nadia finds a dragon hiding under the earth. A dragon with a splinter in its toe, whose terrible roaring causes the earth to break. Nadia slays the dragon and saves the people by uttering a magic spell. Gonothi, say out tongue. Gonothi, say out tongue. It's actually Greek. Rolls right off the tongue, no? Okay. That was interesting. Can you say that again? All the mirror eyes closed. Seems like it. And look, that's not the spell's only power. The card. There's a phone number on it now. Do you know what this means? I think you're ready to make a certain phone call. Ready to put your spell to use? Good. Do you have a phone? Even better. So, here's the plan. You call them and tell them you want to sign up for a tour. Here's the thing. If they act like they're taking you on a tour, everything is good. But, if they've figured you out, they'll try to distract you while they kidnap you. Take it from me. They tell you someone you care about is in danger, but don't believe it. If everything's fine, then everything's fine. But if someone you know is in danger, it's a trap. Get out of there. Are you ready? Dial the number. Yeah. Yeah, what can
can I help you with? That's a big park. You near the Argus gas station on Route 90? All right, I'll pick you up in an hour. You don't have a car, do you? Just guess from your voice. So, see you in an hour. Don't worry about that. I'll be waiting for you once you land. So, it worked then? I think you'll be fine. Just keep the spell close at hand. And remember, if they start telling you someone close had been hurt, it's a trap. It's a few minutes before 3.30 in Istanbul. There's another raft waiting. Another try. Thanks. To you too. I think you'll be fine. You have allies all along this road. Even in the cars of enemies. I've left something for you. Hey, sorry I haven't written in a while. 